this presentation, we'll introduce a process for design research. In particular, we're going to look into the activities that take place in a design research project, as well as its input and output and the resources that are used. There exist many different processes for design work, and uh, this slide just shows a few examples. These processes typically consist of a number of activities that are to be carried out in a certain order. Superficially, these processes might look quite different from each other, but they all share a common structure. Looking at the common denominator of all these different design processes, you can identify three basic activities. First, there is analyze problem, where you analyze and investigate the problems and problem that people or stakeholders experience in some of their activities or in some organization. Then there is design solution, where you create a solution in order to address the problem that has been analyzed. And finally, there is evaluate solution, where you check out how well your solution actually solves the problem. And these activities are drawn in a cycle, and this is to indicate that the activities are not carried out just once, not only a single time, but typically multiple times in iterations. This slide shows a process or a framework for design research. It includes five related activities, uh, starting from problem investigation or problem explication and uh, then requirement definition through artifact design and development, and finally to demonstration and evaluation. Explicate problem is about investigating or analyzing some problem. You try to answer the question, what is the problem experienced by some stakeholders of the practice and why is it important? Then, analyzing the problem is continued in defined requirements and you address the question, what artifact can be a solution for the explicate problem and which requirements are then important for the stakeholders? Knowledge about the problem and the requirements provide input to the activity of design and development where you create an artifact that addresses the explicated problem and fulfills the defined requirements. The last two activities are about assessing the created artifact. The first one, demonstrate artifact, is a lightweight assessment. Uh, kind of a proof of concept. You answer the question, how can the developed artifact be used to address the explicated problem in one specific case? And the activity evaluate artifact is a more comprehensive evaluation. How well does the artifact solve the explicated problem and fulfill the defined requirements? Now, this diagram of the design science research process may give rise to a question. Is this just an ordinary waterfall model? Is the idea that you first carry out one activity completely, for example, explicate problem, you produce a lot of documentation, and then you leave it to the next activity, define requirements, and then you go on to the next activity, and so on, and then you stop that evaluate artifact. And of course, this would be quite problematic. The waterfall model has many disadvantages. And in fact, in practice, you don't work like this. All these activities are carried out in parallel and, and iterative. Instead, the, the arrows between these activities, they don't denote any temporal dependence, but the logical dependence. It only means that the the output you produce in one activity is useful as input to another activity. 
you don't have to carry out the activities in this order. Another question that may be asked is about the research in this. Is there really any research in this design research process? No, it doesn't it look like any old design process? There are activities for problems, requirements, development, evaluation, but uh, that exists in any design process. Why, where is the research? Well, to answer this question, let us extend the previous diagram a bit. On the top, we have now a box for research strategies and methods and creative methods that are to govern the various activities. And at the bottom, we have a knowledge base that should be utilized as a basis for the activities. The top box includes ordinary research strategies and methods such as experiments and case studies and action research or interviews and questionnaires. And these ones, they provide methodical and systematic ways of working when you carry out the various activities here in the design research process. They need to be adapted, but when adapted, they make it possible to work in a methodical and systematic way. The knowledge base is a foundation that is based on results from both previous research and previous design. It can include scientific theories, uh, but also more preliminary results as they are documented in the academic literature. But it can also include existing artifacts and descriptions of these artifacts in in manuals and documentation and white papers. The output of a design research project is not only an artifact, but also knowledge about that artifact. For example, on which theories, uh, scientific theories, is this artifact based? Uh, how does the artifact compare to existing artifacts? Is it original? better in some situations, worse in other situations? And does the artifact itself provide something to the knowledge base? Does it add anything to the knowledge base so that new and other artifacts can be built with that artifact as a basis? A design research project should also produce explicit knowledge about the problem requirements and artifact structure. Such explicit knowledge is an important contribution from a design research activity because it can provide a basis for other design researchers when they ought to build similar artifacts. To summarize, design research differs from design. In design research, there should be methodical and systematic ways of working that are based on research strategies and methods that govern the activities and how you work in the different activities. There is a knowledge base, a foundation that is to be used as a basis for the artifacts that are produced and as a basis in the various activities. The output isn't only an artifact, but knowledge about that artifact, in particular explicit knowledge about the problem, requirements, and artifact structure.